Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for using Streamlabs Desktop in 2024. If you haven't already, click the link in the description to download Streamlabs Desktop for free and we can go ahead and get started. And once you click the link in the description, we're just gonna simply click Download Streamlabs Desktop. Once you've downloaded the Streamlabs Desktop setup, we're gonna go ahead and run it. Just make sure you let it run through all of its setup and complete it so that it runs properly. Once it's complete like this, you're just gonna simply click Finish and you can leave this checked so that it'll just automatically open it up. If it doesn't automatically open up, you can just find the icon like this one um, and just go ahead and open it up and then we can go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna cover all the very basics you need to just simply go live and have a good live stream with a webcam and a game, as well as the proper output and video settings that most people are gonna wanna use, as well as some basic audio settings and filters. And then at the end, I'll throw in a few bonus tips in case you run into any problems of easy fixes that I found that can actually improve the quality and performance of your stream. Once you open up Streamlabs Desktop, the first thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do is come down to the bottom left and click log in. Once you click to log in, you're gonna be prompted with all these different services. Most people are probably gonna be using Twitch or YouTube, I'm just gonna assume. So for this instance, we're just gonna go ahead and log in with our Twitch. Now, as you can tell, we are logged in with our Twitch account and you can make sure by checking the bottom left and seeing that it is your proper username and you're logged into the correct account. Once you've logged into your streaming uh, platform of choice, we're gonna go down to bottom left and click settings. And from here, I'm just gonna click the stream uh, section here on the left and just show you what you can do. Um, if say you don't wanna stream on Twitch or any of these, or maybe you do, but you just don't want to do the login feature, you can still scroll down to stream to custom digest. And if you click that, you're gonna be able to enter the stream key, uh, which you can find you know, on your respective platform and stream uh, the old way, but Streamlabs desktop makes it very easy to just simply log in, which avoids any of that uh, more technical stuff of copy and pasting the stream key. You don't even have to worry about that step. So next we're gonna go to the output tab, which is just under stream on the left. And here you're gonna make, you're gonna wanna make sure you are on advanced uh, instead of simple. And it's gonna add some more settings, but don't get scared. I'll show you exactly what to put, uh, which is gonna work for most people, of course, with settings, it's going to really depend on different things. But in general, the settings I'm going to give you today should be pretty universal for anybody uh, looking to live stream on any platform. You really don't need to touch all of these. The main ones we're going to want to focus on is first the encoder. This one's very important. You want to use your hardware encoder, which means the uh, encoder on your GPU if you can. Most people I'm going to assume have an NVIDIA GPU or at least an AMD one. And I think they have a similar thing. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU, uh, use your hardware encoder, which is H.264. If you do have the new option, which most newer uh, graphics cards should, make sure you select that one. If you don't have either of these, or for some reason your graphics card doesn't you know, have any hardware encoding, you're gonna have to use software encoding, which is X.264. Basically, that just means your CPU is going to be doing the encoding for the stream, which can be good quality, but it's going to come at the cost of utilizing your CPU power. So if you're doing something like playing a game, your game's probably going to suffer and maybe your stream as well, because uh, you're going to be using up uh, your CPU resources to run the stream and the game, and they're going to be kind of conflicting. Whereas if you use something like Invink, it's going to be running on a dedicated chip on your GPU. So you don't have to worry about it affecting your game performance pretty much at all. And the quality is also still very good. So once we've selected our encoder, ideally Invink new, uh, we're going to come down to rate control and you want to make sure you are on CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. This is the best, uh, most universal option for live streaming to any platform. Now, when it comes to the bitrate, this is going to depend on your upload speed. You can look into that uh, if you would like. It's also going to depend on what resolution uh, you're going to be streaming at. But for most people on most platforms, if you're streaming at 1080p, 60 FPS, which is pretty much the most standard universal uh, resolution and frames, people are doing these days 6000 should work just fine for any platform the quality will be you know as good as it can be and you you should have no issues streaming at 6000 as long as your upload speed is at least about a a 10 upload the keyframe interval you can probably just leave on zero this is going to automatically set it depending on your platform so just leaving it at zero you don't have to worry about it uh, for preset this can affect quality as well as performance of your stream uh, so make sure you have this I would recommend anywhere between P5 and P6. If you do have a very good computer and you just are worried about getting the best stream quality possible, you could do P7, but I think P5 is fine. P6 uh, might be the ideal sweet spot, but either one of those is fine. For tuning, you're probably just gonna wanna leave this on high quality because the lower latency is gonna give you lower latency, which means you can interact in more real time with your viewers, uh, but it's gonna come with the cost at some quality. So I'm just gonna recommend 
leave that on high quality. Multi-pass mode, I honestly haven't seen a lot of stuff on, you know, which one of these is best. I've just been running two pass full resolution, but I think any of these would work. But if you want to just copy what I have, just click two pass full resolution. And if you have any problems of any kind, maybe this is a setting you could mess around with, but I don't think any of these should have any problems and they should all uh, be pretty comparable. After that, everything else should probably just be left the same. You can leave profile on high, look ahead off, psycho visual tuning on, uh, GPU should be a zero, and then max speed frames, you can leave that on two. And that should be it for the output settings. Once you complete your output settings, we're gonna go down to video and just make sure we are at the proper resolution and frame rate. As you can see, mine's already on 1920 by 1080 and 60 FPS. If yours is not on this, maybe it's on you know something different, uh, basically all you need to know about the video page here is your base canvas resolution is just simply the size of your monitor. I just have a 1080p monitor. So that's what mine is. If you have something like a 1440p monitor, then that's what you're going to want to have selected here. Um, and then what's actually going to be put out to your stream. And the one you want to make sure is set properly is the output scaled resolution, which for me, I want to stream at 1920 by 1080. So that's what I'm, what I'm going to select. Um, if you don't want to stream at 1080 and let's say you want to stream at 720, you can simply click that here. And if whatever you're trying to stream at, like let's say you want to do 936p, which is for some reason uh, sometimes popular on Twitch, uh, you can simply uh, scroll down to custom and then type that in right here. Once you've got your resolution, you can check your downscale filter. Lanxos is the best quality, so you probably just want to turn that on. But personally, I don't see a huge difference between them. So uh, really, this one isn't super important, but Lanxos is technically the best. So I would just go ahead and select that. FPS type, turn this to common FPS values, and then you can set the FPS to 60, which is gonna be ideal if you're streaming games. If your internet isn't that good, you, you need to cut back on kind of uh, how difficult a stream is to run. Uh, simply by lowering your frames from 60 to 30 is gonna essentially cut the encoding work about in half. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to optimize for performance, streaming at 30 can give you better performance uh, or essentially be easier to run if you don't have the best internet and things like that. But 60 is definitely gonna give you the best uh, viewer experience, especially when it comes to games. Now that we have our video settings, we're going to go back up here to audio and there's not too much you need to worry about here, just a couple things, basically your desktop audio device which you can probably leave on default. As you can see, I can either leave mine on default, which is gonna be my Windows default setting, which is fine for me, but if you wanna make sure that it's definitely recording uh, your proper audio device for your desktop, which is gonna include things like your game sound, any music you're playing, and just all your background audio that's coming through your headset, then you just want to select whichever one that is. For me, it would be this one called Speakers Focusrite USB Audio. That's actually my headset. So I could select that and then I know anything coming through to my headset that I hear is going to show up on stream. Uh, you can get into more complicated audio settings, but this is just gonna be a very basic, uh, simple way to connect it. So anything going into your headphones is going to be heard on the stream, so keep that in mind. After you have that, just come down to mic, uh, aux device one, and as you can tell, it's the same thing, mine's on default, but if I select this one right here, this one's actually my microphone. So just make sure you have the proper microphone selected. If you don't have any microphone audio or anything like that, make sure you go to audio and make sure that it's not disabled and it's not on the improper device and make sure you are on the proper microphone device. Once you've done all those steps we've just went over, you can go ahead and click done for now on the settings. And we're gonna go ahead and just talk about scenes and sources. I'll give you a super simple basic setup and how to add them easily. So for scenes, it should always have a default scene here, which you can start with. If you wanna make your own uh, starting new, you can just click add scene and it'll create one. Uh, but the most important thing here is gonna be your sources. So we're just gonna simply add a source and we're gonna be doing game capture today. This is gonna be best optimized for uh, streaming games. But if you are doing something where you just want a certain window captured, you can use window capture. Uh, or if you just wanna do your entire monitor all the time, you can do display capture and then select the monitor you want to record. But keep in mind that, that everything on your screen with display capture is visible. So keep that in mind so you don't leak any personal information or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and click game capture, add source, you can name it whatever you like, click add source, and then you can leave this on audio on auto. This just means whenever you open up a game, it should automatically uh, you know, detect the game within a few seconds. It might take a second, but just give it a little time. Make sure you open up your game uh, properly. Maybe start like clicking around in the menu and it should automatically detect it. If it's not automatically detecting it or you just want to you know, make sure it's selected on the specific game you have open that you want 
uh, it to be on. You can just click capture specific window and then it'll be here if you do uh, you know, have a game open. I don't in this case, so we're just gonna leave mine on auto as a placeholder, but keep in mind if you do want to select a game, you can just go capture specific window and then find uh, the .exe of your game that you have open. If let's say you're playing Valorant, it should be called like Valorant.exe or, or, and so on. Pretty easy to figure out. But once you've done one of those two things, either leave it on auto or select your game, you really don't need to edit anything here unless something like you don't want your capture cursor, but you probably do. So you probably just need to leave all this exactly how it is and then click close. So now we essentially have our game in the background. And if you'd like to add a webcam like I have, we're just gonna add a source again and then go up to the top, uh, top essential sources area and it says video capture device. We're gonna click that, click add source. And then we're gonna name it whatever you want. You can name it webcam if you wanna keep it more organized. Click add source. And then here you're gonna do the drop down for device. And I have the C922 Pro Stream webcam. We're gonna click that and it should come on. There I am. Uh, from here, you're gonna to wanna to click resolution FPS type and go to custom. Cause you can tell it's, it's like a square right now. And it actually looks pretty good. If you wanna leave it as a square, that's fine. But uh, if you want to change the settings, we're gonna go ahead and go to resolution FPS type, go custom. And then from here, it's gonna mess up the resolution or make it kind of funky. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to 1920 by 1080, which is the native resolution of my webcam. Uh, from here, we're gonna go to FPS and you can either do match output FPS, highest FPS or 30. All of these are gonna basically max it out at whatever your webcam is. Uh, in my case, it's 30, so I'm just gonna select 30. Uh, and then really you shouldn't need to change anything else here unless you want to flip it vertically, but I don't know why you'd want to do that because then you're just upside down. Uh, so let's go ahead and close out of this and I'll show you how to adjust it. All you got to do is click these little squares on the top right. If they're not appearing, all you have to do is just click the webcam and then they should appear and you can click and drag them here. You can also resize it by holding alt and then clicking and then you can tell it just kind of resizes it like that if you do want to kind of crop it. Uh, right in this little menu here. So then you can lower it, you know, put it wherever you'd like in a corner, uh, wherever you want to put it. When it comes to adding alerts, you just want to go back to add source and go to alert box, add source, again, click add source. And here you're going to have all your setup. I personally don't even use alerts because I just find setting them up a pain, uh, at least to get them custom. If you leave them default, uh, it's going to be pretty simple because all you have to do is just literally click done on this and it'll be done. I've messed mine up because I've like tried to make custom ones um, and then didn't finish them. But uh, if you do just want to add alerts and use the default ones, all you have to do is just open this and then click done. And then you can uh, click and drag this alert box around here. Of course, it's like invisible because there's no alerts active right now. Um, but then you can probably just leave them in like the center and then you're gonna have your stream alerts up with whatever platform you have attached, which for me, it's uh, Twitch. So if anytime somebody follows, it's gonna pop up on the screen right where that alert box is. Now I'm gonna go into more of the tips and tricks and some filters you can use that I'm gonna highly recommend that you at least know how to do in case you need them. So if we go to the bottom right at our audio mixer, you can see we have three different audio uh, uh, outputs rather. So we have video capture device, which is our webcam. We don't want that on. It's not selected as a mic, so it shouldn't work anyways, but I'm just gonna go ahead and mute it. And as you can tell, even when I'm not talking, this is my microphone right here, this analog one plus two. Even when I don't talk, you can see the audio level actually still moving. Okay, well, it's making me a liar now, but basically there's background noise. So really easy fix to get rid of uh, background noise is uh, click it, go to filters, edit filters. We're gonna add a filter, uh, filter type, and then we wanna go to noise suppression. Highly, highly recommend you, you have this on. We're gonna go ahead and click add. And then if you do RN noise, it's gonna be the best quality one. The speaks one's also okay, and you can adjust it here, but I'm just gonna recommend you put on RN noise. There's no settings to adjust with it. It just works. It'll cut out any you know background fan noise, uh, background anything. So make sure you have that one on at the very least. If you do want to add another filter, I'm gonna recommend uh, really just the noise gates, probably the second most useful one. The default settings should work for a lot of mics, but you might need to play around with the close and open thresholds to get it to work properly for your microphone. This basically just means that it's not going to record your mic all the time. It's only gonna basically turn your mic on whenever you speak. So this can help eliminate things like breathing noise, uh, sniffles, you know, whatever the case may be that you don't want the microphone picking up. Uh, this will help only pick up your voice whenever you are speaking. When it comes to video filters, you can go to your game capture, right click filters, edit filters, and then click add filter. 
go to filter type and you can go to color correction. This is how people get, uh, you know, really vibrant looking streams. You can, you can come in here and like adjust the saturation up a little bit. I don't have a game up, so you can't actually like tell that it's making a difference. But if you turn this up to like 0 0.10 or even 0 0.15, 0 0.20, that's probably gonna give you a much, uh, color, much more colorful image for your stream. So that's just something optional. optional. You don't have to do that at all. And if your game audio is too loud, you're just gonna have to adjust it with this setup by using this slider here and lowering it uh, however much you want. And that'll make sure that your game audio isn't like too loud and deafening your viewers. It depends what game you're playing, but I found usually anywhere from like minus eight to like minus 15 or 16. It's usually about the sweet spot for game audio, but it's gonna really depend. The final trick I'm gonna show you is if you are having problems with frame drops or skipped frames and things like that, you can open up your settings and go to advanced and actually scroll down until you find the network section right here. Here, I recommend you turn on dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames. This is gonna mean whenever you drop frames, it's gonna actually just dynamically and automatically lower your bitrate. So your stream quality is gonna get worse, but you're not gonna skip frames or drop frames, which in my opinion is better. But if you don't like that, you can simply leave that off. That's completely fine. I've also found that by leaving enable new networking code uh, check marked and on, can sometimes improve performance and stream stability, at least in my case. But these are just some settings to uh, resort to if you're having issues or looking for solutions to problems, you know, resulting in dropped frames, skipped frames, uh, stream stability, and things like that. It's at least something you can try. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Now you're ready to click go live and be live on your platform of choice with alerts, good audio, and a webcam. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.